All right. So uh, the slides you just saw were hosted uh, on Netlify. Uh, because this isn't my computer, but they're online anyway. And they're hosted on GitHub and created in Vue.js. So uh, um, the way to, I mean, there are many ways to create something like this uh, in Vue.js. But the way I went about to do this was with the help of Eagle.js. So Eagle.js is whoop, this right here, a hackable slideshow framework for Vue. And there's an example slideshow with everything from in here right at the beginning. So the nice thing is, if you want to present code, then you can just throw your code in there and you have uh, code highlighting out of the box, more or less. And you can also do things like uh, live coding, like you have your small bo box in here and change some CSS and then that's reapplied to your slide, slide uh, straight away. So that's really nice. And uh, yeah, so here's some code that's highlighted. And this also shows you like the basic structure uh, you can use to, if you have Eagle.js. So Eagle.js at its core is a mix-in, which provides you with this slide tag. This whole thing is written in, in Puck. I don't know if you know this. It's, I think it used to be called Jade. Uh, it's uh, HTML, but without all the brackets and indentation to show structure. So if you, if you like Python, you will love Fuck. Um, and the thing is, you have this uh, slide component where you can put in some stuff and it will be displayed on a slide. And uh, yeah, then you have another slide with uh, two properties right here. Slide and left is the transition on enter. There's also a leaf transition you can set. And uh, there's an interesting thing. You can set a property steps if you want uh, things to happen while you're on a slide when you um, define a next, um, like hit the next button. Then uh, this step variable property is pumped into the component and then you have this the best all other frail frameworks and so on get uh, displayed one after, after the, uh, the other as you hit next. And you can do stuff like this. So this is a slide, but it has toggles and you can consume variables and then continue to use these variables on the next slides. So if we continue at some point, this name <laughs> might be used again. So um, yeah, that's Eagle.js. It's really mainly a bit of CSS to do styling and this component. And uh, if you want to change the styles, there's interesting mechanic in that, uh, that you have to watch out for. Because, um, so let's inspect this. Slides are kind of very much unlike the rest of the web because in the web, usually you want text to reflow based on the space you have. Slides, you really want to behave like an image. So they have to resize depending on, um, on the screen size. So you want smaller text, not text that's being reflown. And let me try to show what this does. So yeah, this text is being resized. And the way uh, Eagle.js does this is a bit peculiar. So if I resize here, you see the font size at the app tag gets changed. And what this enables me to do is if I set my size for all the things, more or less, in EM, all of the elements beneath the app are going to inherit this font size. And the EM sizes according 
to the font size of a parent. So EM is a bit weird. Uh, so this one here inherits the font size from the app and this right here, which has uh, a width, for example, this width is set according to this inherited font size. So basically what this does is when I change this, everything that's sized in EM will be resized as well. And this really limits your options if you want to size things in Eagle.js you have to define your CSS in EM or in percentages. That's of course also possible because that's also related to the parent tag. And if you're using CSS grid, fractions would be fine, everything that's related to the parent. And in some instances, you might be able to use viewport units like uh, VH, VW, but that's already a bit dangerous. So that's kind of weird because um, if you look at other frameworks for creating slides like Reveal.js, maybe you know that one, that's really popular, but uh, it's kind of old school. Uh, feels kind of like uh, developing with HTML and JS like eight years ago, so completely different area, uh, era. Um, what that does is uh, use a transform on the main container. So you have a, a CSS transform which just scales the thing or if you look at Spectacle, uh, which is like the main React uh, presentation tool for, for slides, that adds transforms to all the elements that need it, basically. Also changes some of the font size at the, at the root container, but not to resize everything, I think just to give it a base font size, which is a bit responsive. So yeah, that's the main thing to look out for. If you want to create your own theme, it comes with a theme already, so you don't really have to think about if, uh, it if you don't want to. And whoop. So what this looks like in the end is a standard view CLI uh, uh, app. So standard structure, you have your uh, yarn which starts the whole thing and then in the source you have a app which contains a lot of stuff. So you have your slides. This for example, oh, all of them use a very short fade out animation on leaf. This comes with all the animation in animate CSS, like a standard animation library, so you have a nice selection of effects for um, going from one slide to the next. And uh, you have, of course, the possibility to use components within this, so if something gets too complex, like my title slide or the, the Pong thing, then you can put it in its own component, of course, and then use this. This is just a standard uh, single file component. And yeah, you have a bunch of slides and move through them. And you have to have your slideshow mix in, which also provides you with your slide component. It will be interesting to see how they do this thing in view free. But I guess mix ins will still be around, just not encouraged that much. And uh, uh, this also exposes like navigation uh, functions. So if you want to add the possibility to use your um, slides with uh, mobile touch um, navigation, that's possible. I'm just using Hammer.js for this, looking on the main, uh, main container. And if I detect a swipe right, I call the previous step and swipe left next step. That's pretty easy and I want some extra keyboard navigation for my uh, slides, not just the left and right. Also arrow up, arrow down, enter in space should work. So I'm also mapping these to next step and previous step. And that's almost all of the JavaScript I have to do if I don't want extra stuff like Pong. And yeah, otherwise it's some basic CSS. I kind of uh, abstracted this EM thing away and created like a 
basic space variable, which is like my basic unit, because this EM doesn't really make sense because it doesn't really map to a pixel size, changes over time, so created space. So this is uh, thus, and uh, reads in the variables where the space is defined as one EM, probably, yeah. And yeah, that's, that's the basic of, of this. So if you want to create your slides in code, you can do it with you, and that's pretty nice. Thanks.